The idea that we might one day touch the stars may seem ancient, but in truth, it's relatively recent in human history. This desire took shape in 1838, when German astronomer Friedrich Bessel accomplished something unprecedented. He measured the distance to a star. That was the moment when the vastness of the universe began to truly sink in, revealing the enormous challenge we're up against. Since then, the dream of exploring other worlds has only grown stronger. And today, with technological advances and growing awareness of the limits of our natural resources here on Earth, that dream is beginning to feel less out of reach. Of course, we're still far from it. The stars are incredibly distant. But what if there were a planet with Earth-like characteristics just a few light years away? Not hundreds or thousands like we usually hear? That possibility changes everything. Just as the moon served as our first step into space, a relatively nearby planet could act as a bridge to future interplanetary exploration. Instead of seeing interstellar space as an unreachable void, we could begin to view it as a vast ocean dotted with distant islands, potential destinations in our cosmic journey. And as unbelievable as it sounds, one of those islands has already been spotted. Since 2016, astronomers have confirmed the existence of a very special exoplanet, Proxima b, located in the orbit of the closest star to Earth, Proxima Centauri. Although the discovery was made nearly a decade ago, its definitive confirmation is more recent and represents a real stroke of luck. After all, most of the more than 5,000 exoplanets catalogued to date are around 300 light years away. Proxima b, on the other hand, is just 4.2 light years from us, which, in cosmic terms, is practically next door. That fact caught the attention of scientists and space agencies around the world. In fact, NASA is already considering the possibility of launching a mission there by the end of this century. The plan is to kick off the project around 2069, a date chosen specifically to mark the 100th anniversary of the moon landing. But despite the excitement, many experts are keeping their feet on the ground. After all, the distance separating us from Proxima Centauri is still staggering. Just for perspective, it's about 100 million times farther than the Moon. The Alpha Centauri system, which Proxima is part of, consists of three stars, Alpha Centauri A and B, which orbit each other, and Proxima Centauri, a small red dwarf that orbits the two main stars at a distance of about 0.2 light years. Proxima b orbits its star at a distance of just 0.049 astronomical units. That's more than 20 times closer than Earth is to the Sun. Even so, it lies within the habitable zone, which means it could theoretically support liquid water, and maybe even some form of life. Even though it's our cosmic neighbor, the journey there with today's technology would take about 78,000 years. This estimate is based on the speed of the fastest spacecraft ever launched by Humanity New Horizons, which travels at 59,000 kilometers per hour. To make the trip in just 20 years, a more reasonable timeline for a scientific mission, we'd need to reach speeds above 300 million kilometers per hour, which is about 28% the speed of light. That's a giant leap. That's the main barrier NASA and other agencies will have to overcome, developing propulsion systems capable of taking us to the stars within a time frame compatible with human life. It's believed that to make a trip to Alpha Centauri feasible, we'd need a spacecraft capable of reaching at least 10% of the speed of light. But here's the problem. Accelerating a spacecraft to those speeds would require an immense amount of energy and, naturally, fuel. Despite all these obstacles, scientists and engineers have never stopped dreaming big. Since the 1960s, bold ideas for reaching the stars have been surfacing. A classic example is Project Orion, developed in the United States. The proposal was, quite literally, to propel a spacecraft using controlled nuclear explosions. Small bombs would be released behind the craft, detonating in sequence. Each explosion would generate a shock wave, which would be absorbed by a special plate on the back of the spacecraft, pushing it forward. A radical idea, but one that worked on paper. Originally, Project Orion aimed to place large payloads in orbit or even send humans to Mars. But over time, scientists realized that the same technique could be applied to interstellar travel. Later on, the renowned physicist Freeman Dyson suggested an even more powerful version using fusion bombs instead of fission. However, that upgrade was eventually abandoned due to technological advances and the growing concern over using nuclear weapons in space. Another visionary idea came from physicist Robert Bassard, who proposed a completely different approach to space travel, the interstellar ramjet engine. Instead of carrying tons of fuel, the spacecraft would collect hydrogen directly from space, using a massive magnetic funnel as it moved. That hydrogen would then be fused to generate thrust. 
The idea was brilliant, make use of what the universe itself provides, but there was a catch, and a big one. The density of hydrogen between stars is extremely low, about one atom per cubic centimeter. To collect just one kilogram of hydrogen at 10% the speed of light, you'd need a funnel over 5,000 kilometers wide. And even then, the amount collected wouldn't be enough. So, despite being an inspiring concept, the ramjet was considered unfeasible with current technology. In the 1970s, another project drew attention, Daedalus. Developed by the British Interplanetary Society and led by engineer Alan Bond, it remains one of the most realistic interstellar spacecraft concepts ever designed. Instead of explosions, Daedalus would use controlled fusion micro-explosions with capsules of deuterium and helium-3 as fuel. The spacecraft would have two stages, be fully automated and weigh 50,000 tons, with 93% of that mass being fuel. This giant could reach 10% the speed of light and arrive at Proxima Centauri in just over 30 years. The mission would be a flyby, gathering as much data as possible and sending it back to Earth. A one-way trip, but one that could open the door to understanding our stellar neighbor. Another fascinating idea emerged in the 1980s with the concept of laser sails. Imagine a spacecraft with no engine, no fuel, propelled only by the force of a beam of light. The idea is to use a gigantic ultralight sail about six kilometers in diameter and weighing just 30 grams, and aim a highly focused laser or microwave beam at it. The radiation pressure would push the sail, gradually accelerating it, potentially reaching 20% the speed of light in just two weeks and arriving at the Alpha Centauri system in only 21 years. It's almost like launching a paper sheet into the wind, but with absurd precision and power. The problem? There'd be no way to slow down. And what if we want to go even faster? That's where the idea of antimatter propulsion comes in. A single gram of antimatter can release 70 times more energy than nuclear fusion and 4 billion times more than oil combustion. With that kind of energy, we could reach up to 40% of the speed of light, shortening the journey to Alpha Centauri to just over a decade. But there's a huge obstacle. Antimatter barely exists in nature and is incredibly difficult to produce. Today, we can create it only in microscopic quantities using particle accelerators and it would take billions of years to produce just one gram. On top of that, the energy needed to create that amount is comparable to the total output of all nuclear power plants in the United States. It's like trying to build a spaceship powered by a fuel that's still in the theoretical stage. And that's exactly where we are today. We have the desire, we have the destination, Proxima B, but we still don't have a viable path to get there. Our technology is still crawling when it comes to interstellar travel. Despite the progress, we still don't know how to cross the immense distances between stars in a practical, safe, and efficient way. But that could change, maybe faster than we think. NASA's goal of launching a mission in 2069 sounds ambitious, but it's not impossible. After all, no one can predict exactly where we'll be technologically 40 years from now. If the current pace of development continues, or speeds up, we might find solutions that today seem like science fiction. Technologies involving artificial intelligence, extreme miniaturization, and advances in quantum physics could surprise us and open doors we haven't even imagined yet. At first, it's likely that the first missions to other stars will be carried out by robotic probes, intelligent, small, and lightweight machines capable of traveling at 10% the speed of light and operating autonomously. But that doesn't mean humans will be left out of the equation. On the contrary, if we look at the current progress in biotechnology, genetic engineering, and cellular development, we might find that human presence is closer than we think, even if indirectly. Of course, this is only a possibility. When it comes to interstellar travel with humans on board, the challenge multiplies. Transporting people would require massive structures, robust life support systems, and absurd amounts of energy. That's why one of the most realistic ideas, although still distant, is the creation of so-called interstellar arcs. These arcs would be true, self-sustaining space cities, capable of traveling for thousands of years while carrying multiple generations of humans, animals, and plants. They would function as closed ecosystems, maintaining environmental balance and allowing life to continue even on extremely long journeys. This concept was explored by physicists like Gerald O'Neill in the 1970s and could become a viable option if Earth, or even the other planets and moons we may colonize in the future, becomes uninhabitable. However, there's a big question looming over this plan. Why would someone embark on a journey knowing they'd never reach the destination? The answer might lie in desperation, if there are no more options. 
If environmental or social collapse becomes inevitable, some communities might choose to leave in search of a new home, even knowing the journey could last thousands of years. Let us know in the comments, would you embark on a journey like that? On the other hand, if we manage to make significant advances in medicine and biotechnology, to the point of extending human life or even slowing down metabolism during the trip, we might reach speeds between 10% and 30% of the speed of light with crewed spacecraft. That would make the mission not only possible but practical within a single generation. Still, this future depends on revolutionary discoveries in physics, maybe even on secrets the universe hasn't revealed yet. And that raises the big question. Does NASA have an ace up its sleeve? Some secret project? An extraordinary plan that hasn't been disclosed yet? For now, all we can do is wait. Who knows? When 2069 arrives, we might be standing at the dawn of a new era, not just observing the stars, but getting ready to touch them. The truth is, Proxima Centauri is just around the corner on the universal scale. But for us, it remains a colossal challenge. It's not just about building faster ships. It's about rethinking everything, physics, biology, and our very concept of existence. Maybe we won't be the first ones to arrive there, but our creations, intelligent machines, self-replicating probes, digital seeds of humanity, just might be the pioneers of that journey. And even if it seems impossible today, it's worth remembering. Just over a century ago, flying was considered a crazy dream. Who knows? By 2069, we might be witnessing the beginning of our interstellar leap, bearing witness to the moment humanity crossed, for the first time, the boundary between the stars. So now you know, reaching Proxima Centauri isn't just a matter of time, it's a matter of overcoming limits. A journey that begins with questions, moves through dreams, and maybe one day ends with the first human step in another star system. Will we live to see it happen? Or will we simply be the generation that paved the way? If you enjoy exploring possibilities like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel right now. Leave a like, share this video with someone else who loves the universe, and hit the bell so you don't miss the next episodes. Here, the journey through space is just beginning. Thanks for watching. See you at the next frontier.